Okay, so this week for my project that I wanted to do for Action Hank, I've gotten my first two levels done, so we're going to take a look at what I'm intending to do with each level and what my progression throughout the levels is going to be. So if we look into our first level here, it's going to be a basics video for both of the initial two levels that I have. So they introduce you to the two most ground mechanics that are part of this. The first one we go over is our slide mechanic. So I have a bunch of wavy fluid areas that allow you to pick up a lot of speed. And then we start to introduce our jump area right in here in this little area. And then I try to get the player to realize how momentum works in this game by having uphill areas and a few areas where you can bonk when you jump, which drastically reduces your speed. So this whole level is just about getting some of the very basics down. Uh, most of these levels are estimated to be around 10 seconds for the easy one lane ones. Once we get into the more complicated stuff, it's going to amplify to 20 and then 30 seconds because you're going to be making laps back and forth across the, the, the levels here. So for right now, we have this one set up like this. And then if we go back and we take a look at the other level, uh, we'll go through that as well. And then we'll start getting into uh, actually playing it and showing off some of the stuff that we have going on here. Now for this one, this one was all about jumping. So once they've learned sliding, they're going to want to slide down every single ramp they see. So I decided to have some traps here that prevent them from sliding persistently so that they realize they need to learn how to slide at the right time. So as we see here, when you get in, you will fall down and you slide across this and then you have to jump in time or else you'll fall to your death to be able to get onto this, which then transfers you over when you jump over to this platform, which again, we have our momentum uh, mechanic to show that if you don't Press and hold your jump for long enough, you won't get a long enough jump, and you'll hit this edge piece, which will slow you down considerably. Now, it won't let you fail the level just because you're doing that. If you slow down here, or you get caught here, and you slow down enough, you actually still have a chance to run, jump, get over onto this top bit, and use this, this speed boost we have right here as a recovery mechanic to get back onto the main track. Now, the normal path will be, you'll slide down here, jump off this, do a double jump from here, and then once you get to here, jump again, and it makes you careen straight through this little gap, and then get recovered right in here. Now, when you get recovered in here, you can slide because it's immediately timed for that, but you can't slide the whole time or you'll just stay connected to the track and fall off. So you'll have to jump off about at the midway point to get to the next part, which then introduces our slide, and then we start introducing our next mechanic, which is when the levels will start to augment in difficulty and how long you actually are playing the level a lot, because this starts introducing our, our wall scaling mechanics and also our double back mechanics. So you need to realize that you need enough speed to get all the way up on this side, but you need to do it with a combination of sliding and regular walking to get the most out of it to be able to get up onto this other side. And this is a mechanic where we don't want to have them get into a half pipe immediately because those are substantially more difficult than a one-sided half pipe. So we give them this as an introductory. And then in our next level that we're going to do next time, uh, we're going to introduce half pipes and then we're going to start going into loops. Because once we get into those two, things open up dramatically for us to start increasing the pace of the level. And then also we have a large amount of stuff to go over with doubling back on itself within levels. So let's go back to the first level and we're just going to do some playthroughs while I show off some of the stuff about them. So on this level, I'm going to show a few ways to complete it. So if we just do the regular way and we use the slide, and we don't do any jumping, you'll see we hit some areas where we need to learn how to jump, and then we go fairly slow. And
and we finish in about 13 and a half seconds, which isn't bad, but it's not very good, especially in this game where seconds are a difference of a lot. So if we start doing the mechanics correctly, and we start doing our jumps at the appropriate time, you'll notice our time decreases by a few seconds. And this keeps decreasing as we do certain things, such as jumping at the right points, because then that takes out some of the travel time upwards that we would have to deal with, and we can get our score down even farther. Now, for this one, we I try to keep in mind that if everyone tries to slide, they're going to want to jump immediately off this point, because they're going to want to keep their momentum. But if they do that, they're going to land somewhere about here, and they're only going to go about half the, the speed that they would if they just did a slide and then ran up this area. And then if you jump here, this is the red herring, because if you jump at this point, you get enough arc where you can immediately start sliding again. So you amplify even more of your speed, and then you just slide over this bump, because this ends up uh, being a mechanic where the faster you go on a slide and different visual effects happen, the less resistance you have on upward uh, slopes. So on this upward slope here, you don't feel the resistance as much and you don't lose as much speed as you do on the other one if you were to slide there. And then once you start coming down, you start building up your speed more and more. And then here's the trick is you got to know your timing, when to let off, so you can actually get over this obstacle along with the preceding two. If you line it up just right, you can get it so that you jump careening straight over this onto this, doing a perfect edge jump to immediately jump over the next one as well. And then you land somewhere about here, which then shows off this, hey, as you run up, you slowly slow down, because that's going to be important later for preserving your momentum overall. Now, if we go over to the other level and we play through on that one, this one works slightly differently because we use different red herrings to figure out exactly where the player needs to go. If I just play this normally without doing any of the slides, it's possible. And then we get our recovery mechanic here, which then allows us to get to this point where we can do it. But we notice, oh, I can't actually make it up this half pipe. So then you start realizing you have to use your stuff in combination with each other. So if we slide jump, and then we do our, our actually intended strats, we notice we get a lot more visual effects to show off that we're going faster along with our momentum. Now with this, there's different ways where we've used our upper path as a way for the player to do better or worse. So to get on to the upper path is very hard, but if you time it just right, you can get it. And if you do, it'll shave seconds off your time. But at the same time, that's rather difficult, so that's only for the more experienced players coming back to revisit this map. Now, for the regular players, we use this as if you're too slow, this is your recovery mechanic. But also, we have our traditional standard route, which has more risk inherently, if they keep not utilizing all of their toolkit. So it's one of those things, we're trying to promote good habits while introducing new mechanics at the same time. So that's as far as I've gotten. I need to flesh out the structure so that these aren't just floating in the air and they look like they're actually part of the game or they're, just, they're actually being propped up. But other than that, that's how far I've gotten on these first two levels. I'm going to do a lot more playtesting with them to make sure that they're sound. They are both completable and both routes work on this one. And I'm planning on adding a secondary route to the slide on the first one for people who are mastering as well as intro players so that there's dynamic play for both season and newbie players. Thank you very much.